Hello. I'm going to be uh, testing this Ronin uh, katana here, and uh, well, it's not a katana, but it's the uh, the European style sword. Before we get this party started, there's some important stuff you should note. Uh, first, I'm not an employee of Ronin Katana. They sent me a cool-ass sword to destroy, which is awesome. Also, uh, if you decide to do any of this stuff yourself, note it's really dangerous. Read some words here, and uh, do so at your own risk. These are some quick specs of the blade for your enjoyment if you're into that kind of thing. So this again is the Ronin. I've taken it out of the scabbard. You can see that the uh, the scabbard has the metal uh, mouth on it. In large color, there seems to be the kind of standard wax buildup in here. A few quick notes about this blade. First off, it's got a wooden scabbard. I don't know if any of the furniture or appearance is going to be the same in the production run. The handle is also a wooden handle wrapped in leather then wrapped in cord. I don't know if that'll be the same. It's my understanding though that it's intended to use the blades as peened or to move to a peen type series. It doesn't provide as many options for customization, but it does provide some stability when they're properly constructed. I'll be disassembling the handle at the end of the test. You can see that the blade is, before use, in good standing, it's not damaged. Even though it has seen some use before it came to me, it appears all in all very, very new. This wax-like substance around the crossguard is actually an epoxy resin that runs through the handle. Again, I'll be disassembling the handle at the end of the test, so you'll be able to see it in greater detail then. I'm not going to do any paper cutting tests or anything. It's really hot out here right now, so I'm going to uh, just do some simple bottle cutting first and uh, see how the sword goes. So after the first test, uh, this uh, Ronin Katana Euro Edition sword held up pretty well. There wasn't any really dings or scratches on the blade itself, uh, nothing really to note. What I would say though is it had a tendency to kind of rip through targets a little bit, just through mass alone and not necessarily through uh, uh, sharpness. I, I think this blade's been used a bit though, so I give it a little bit of leeway. Uh, just because it, it's not necessarily super sharp, uh, it's also a prototype, and what I'm really looking for is, you know, how well does it hold up. What I can say is after smacking some water bottles with it, um, so far there's, there's no wiggle or looseness in the blade, everything still feels exactly like it did before I hit water bottles with it, which is exactly what I'd hope for. Next I'm going to be testing rolled wet newspaper with wooden cores. The blade took more than one stroke to cut through any of the rolled wet newspaper targets that I used it on. Unfortunately, due to bad cameramanship, if that's a word, I wasn't able to get all of them recorded. 
What you can see is the blade with one hard stroke would come in at approximately a third to half the way through the target and stop just before, in, or after the core. It did do better on some of the targets when they were smaller, but overall it took multiple strokes to get through them. At this point, the blades cut through everything that it was supposed to cut through. Water bottles, rolled newspapers, which are a simulation for tatami mats. So I'm going to move on to the abuse portion of the test. You can see that I'm banging it into a tree at this point several times. This would definitely be indicative of abuse. What I am noticing is that the, uh, the cord wrap along the leather grip here is loosened up just a little bit. Now I've cut several targets with it so far and this blade was used before I started the test. So keep that in mind that it's been handled a lot. Still the, uh, at this point what I notice is that the, the grip has loosened slightly. Other than the loosened grip or rather cord around the handle, Nothing else appears to be wrong. The blade's not bent, I don't see any edge rolling, but there's not necessarily a really pristine edge to start with. However, that's going to change very shortly. In the next test, what I do is basically take the, the edge of the sword and do edge-on-edge -edge strikes along with another katana blade that I've mounted to my cutting stand. Now, you can see I'm striking the blade initially somewhat lightly, but after a while, I start giving it a little oomph. I'm now striking the blade with a pipe along where I've been striking the sword. I'm also striking along the flats of the blade. The last test that I'm going to be doing is this bend test, and you can see that I'm doing it at some relatively steep angles. The other thing you want to keep in mind is that this was the last test I performed, so any stress fractures or damage that caused the blade to crack or would make it more likely to break would already be there while I'm testing it. After I bend it, I bang it on the stand a few times just to see if it's going to go. At this point, though, I'm exhausted because that armor is way heavier than it looks. I was really hoping to break the blade in half, but at this point, I think I've given it enough. You can see that the edge shows some pretty significant signs of damage. The handle is well, the cord wrap has come undone to a much larger extent than it was before. It's no longer loose, but rather coming unraveled. The guard has the slightest wiggle in it. It's almost undetectable, but it is there. If you push hard enough, you can feel it move slightly. Now as I move up the blade, for the most part, the blade is still pretty much straight. Even though I bent it back and forth, it didn't take a very steep set, and I'll show that in greater detail later. It does have a slight bend, but it's overall very minor. I kept the edge damage to one side, and you can see that even though I was banging it with some gusto into another, you know, hard metal surface, it didn't really, it didn't really damage the blade as much as I would have thought it would. Uh, it stayed in uh, relatively good form. The nicks go in there approximately two millimeters to three millimeters at the deepest, and overall, I have to say, I expected more damage. In this part of the photo, you can see the most damaged part of the blade from the top. You can also get a view of the cross section of the blade. Overall, it didn't bend as steeply as I would have thought it would given the angle I bent it at. This photo shows you a greater detail of how bent the blade is. It's really not that bad. Now onto the handle that I promised. I know many folks are curious about the peen type of construction, so I began unwinding the handle, and you can see the leather grip underneath. It looks like there's some double-sided or sticky tape to keep the cord winding tight. I cut all the cord and leather off and you can see there's a wooden grip underneath it all. It appeared to be pretty well formed and made. 
When I scratched away some of it, you can see that the epoxy runs all the way down the handle. So there isn't really a lot of gap between the wood and the metal because it's filled with epoxy and it kept it very tight. It wasn't particularly easy to clean off. After getting the handle off, you can see pretty clearly how the handle is constructed. It's a full tang that runs all the way down into the pommel and then is peened. You can also see that the epoxy type substance runs into the pommel uh, near and around where the tang enters it to keep it stable and secure. It's unlikely that it's going to move. I've also taken a video here where you can see the cross guard moving up and down the hole or slotting that the blade fits into on the cross guard. It seems to be relatively snug and pretty form fit. I actually had a little bit of difficulty getting the epoxy resin that was inside the cross guard to loosen up and come out. Now that same resin as I noted before is in the pommel. I don't know enough about sword construction to say if that's intentional or a byproduct of putting the handle on with epoxy, but it does seem like it would keep the, the tang and the peen and the pommel very stable on the handle. When I do a destructive test video, I try to let the test do most of the talking for me and keep my opinion out of it. I fail at that pretty frequently, but I'm trying. On any note, I do plan on giving you some of my opinions on this sword, but before I do, I just want to take a moment and say that I hope that the video content that I've produced so far and the tests that you've seen have helped you make up your own mind or at least formulate some kind of opinion on if the sword's good, bad, right, wrong, or indifferent. I'm not here to sell you anything or tell you what's right or wrong. I'm just here to provide some information and have some fun while I do it. Hopefully it's entertaining to you. If you're to buy the blade and use it for what it's intended for, hopefully you have some idea of what to expect. And if you insist on being a dumbass with it, hopefully you have some idea of how far you can push it before really bad things start to happen. Now, don't take that as me condoning dumbassery. I don't condone dumbassery. If you were to hurt yourself, well, you'd probably end up on cloud 13 with the people that like fall into manholes or off of skyscrapers while they're texting or, you know, the, the folks that get hit by a train because they're jamming out too loud with their Beats headphones or something. That's not really the point. The point is that it's wildly dangerous and frankly a very expensive hobby to have. Exercise caution if you insist on dumbassery. You know, caution noted. In terms of my opinion on the subject, uh, well, I, frankly, I really like the blade. That's my opinion. And the reason I like the blade is because this is still in a sword shape. Now, you may have seen from some of the other content that I make that swords, after you whack them into trees, split logs with them, whack them into other swords, and then bend them back and forth along with beating them with a pipe, don't always stay in one piece. And the one piece that they do stay in isn't always sword shaped anymore and isn't always straight and functional as a weapon. And this one was. So the fact that it still survived, not just because it's a sub $300 blade, but because it, it survived those tests is something I, I was really thrilled with. Uh, the handle as well held up really well. You saw that uh, there was a slight amount of wiggle and the cord started coming undone uh, during the testing. But underneath that cord wrap, there was a perfectly functional leather handle that still allowed the blade to be used. And the handle was very sturdy overall. The pommel's on there more than I can really do anything about. And the damage to the blade uh, is is minor, I believe, on the on the grand scale. Now, granted, you know it's it's pretty ugly and messed up, but uh, it's at least fixable if I had to deal with a grinder. Unfortunately, I don't. But uh, if I did, it would at least be fixable, as opposed to only suitable for the garbage or you know like a farm implement or something. So that's what I like about it. What I don't like about it is the the sharpness. Now you uh, saw the kind of blade starting to rip through targets a little bit. I had some trouble getting through the double rolled tatami mats, or not tatami mats, but the rolled newspaper with wooden cores. I'm testing this alongside other Ronin Katana products, uh, namely the Katanas, and they're moving through those medium very well. So the, the sharpness is would be my only gripe about it. Now that said, I'm not an expert or even student of European martial arts. So I know there's examples where you take the blade and hit them with the dumb end, and that's that's all well and good. I didn't test it that way, so if it were sharper, I'd be able to, to test and cut in the way that I'm a little bit more familiar. That said, it may be intentional, or Ronan may want to make the blades not sharp so you can do those particular types of things, or it may just be that this is a prototype and it's not representative of what Ronan will produce at the end. I don't have the answers to those questions, but the sharpness is the one portion of the uh, the testing that I thought it came up a little bit lacking. Other than that, it uh, it performed exceedingly well. I also made a point to show everyone uh, from the photos earlier the peen construction. It seemed to hold up really well. I didn't experience any problems. 
I know there were some uh, some notable issues in previous iterations of hex nut constructions. I didn't experience any of those issues with this blade, and uh, and I, I certainly, as you saw from the video, uh, tried to break it in half, and it, it didn't end up happening. So that's my opinion. I think the the sword held up really well. I'm pretty very I'm pretty pleased with it overall, and I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you like the video, click the likey, subscribey, dislikey buttons uh, and, and throw, throw that down. I guess it helps me. I'm not exactly sure how, but it does something. Uh, also, if you have any hateful commentary, try to make it funny. I always enjoy those. Uh, it makes me feel not like a unique and beautiful snowflake, but I do have a lot of fun with it. If you have positive stuff to share, I, <laughs> I appreciate that uh, you know, quite a bit more than the negative stuff, but you know, it doesn't necessarily seem to be the trend. On any note, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a good one.